The exhibition was launched in December 2019 at Newcastle City Library. Unfortunately, we had to close our doors in March due to the COVID-19 pandemic. As we've been unable to allow access to the exhibition since then, we decided to create a lasting record, which we could share with our local communities and beyond. Here's the story of our exhibition. Our exhibition explores the history of the Jewish communities in the Northeast. There are Jewish communities principally in Newcastle and Gateshead, although other communities have existed in places such as South Shields and Stockton and Sunderland, West Hartlepool, Darlington and Middlesbrough. We focus on the history of the Jewish community in Newcastle, their social and charitable endeavours. We explore the wider movement of the Jewish community to this wonderful country through the centuries. We explore the history of some of the reasons why they migrated here. We look at notable figures from the world of literature and business in the Northeast and across the UK. Jewish people who have contributed to the rich history of our nation and the Northeast. The exhibition explored the history of the Jewish community in Newcastle from its earliest times. There is some debate as to when Jewish people first lived in Newcastle. It might have been as early as the late 1100s, but the real story of the Newcastle Jewish community begins sometime during the 18th century. Looking at the early trade directories, we can see that a small number of Jewish businesses had started to flourish. The first town directory of 1778 lists I. Levi, and in 1790 a mastrologer is listed as a linen draper. The early Newcastle Jewish community numbered about a dozen families. A loosely formed congregation emerged and a Soshet was engaged. The Soshet would have provided properly slaughtered meat to satisfy religious tradition. On the 8th of October 1832, the congregation was formally established. The Reverend Mr Franklin was the Soshet and General Factotum. During the 19th century, the community had developed to such an extent in Newcastle that by 1836, the congregation decided to take steps to erect a synagogue. The new synagogue in Temple Street opened in 1838. By the 1870s, the now United Hebrew Congregation required a larger synagogue. The new synagogue was built on Albion Street, later Leesards Park Road, opened in August 1880. The late 19th century saw a mass influx of refugees from Russia and Poland, many of whom came to the northeast and joined up with existing Jewish communities or created communities of their own. One such community created the Beth Hamidrash in Newcastle in 1891, which was supported by the Leesers Park Road Synagogue. The congregation of the Beth Hamidrash continued to grow and an additional synagogue was built in 1904 on Corporation Street. In 1924, a new synagogue was built on Ravensworth Terrace. This synagogue was active until the late 1960s as members of the community had begun to move away from the city centre. It closed in 1969. I can go back to when I was growing up. As I said, we lived in Biker and there were not many Jewish people living in that part of the town. Most of the Jewish people lived in the west end of Newcastle and the, those that were more settled and richer perhaps had begun, a lot of them, to live in Jesmond. And so at that time in addition to this main synagogue in the centre of town, there was another synagogue opened about 1914 in Jasmond. There was another smaller synagogue in the West End, much smaller. In um, It was called the Ravensworth Synagogue and it was in uh, behind Westcote Road, going up Westcote Hill, uh, where most of the uh, Jewish population lived. As Sydney recalls, a new synagogue was built in Jesmond, which was officially opened in March 1915. 
The need for new synagogues arose as the population moved out of the city centre to the suburbs. As the Jewish community continued to move away from the city centre, discussions were held in 1947 to form a new Hebrew congregation in Gosforth. An executive for the Gosforth and Kenton area was established. Meetings, services and celebrations took place in several locations in Gosforth until the Gosforth and Kenton executive found a suitable piece of land on Lansdowne Terrace. The foundation stone for the new place of worship and seat of learning was laid in 1954. Moving into the 60s and 70s, changes to the population, geographic distribution and financial considerations precipitated thoughts of the unification of the synagogues, Leesers Park Road, Gosforth and Kenton and Jesmond. Both the Leesers Park Road and Gosforth and Kenton synagogues were under threat of demolition from proposed motorway developments. This proved to be the catalyst for uniting the three synagogal bodies. Steps then took place to form the United Hebrew Congregation. The new congregation became operational on the 1st of March 1973. The three synagogues continued to operate until 1978, when Leesers Park Road Synagogue closed. Members used Gosforth and Kenton and Jesmond until the opening of the new synagogue on Graham Park Road in 1986. The Newcastle Reform Synagogue was founded in January 1965. Several Jewish people residing in the area had been brought up in the Reform tradition. Early services and meetings were held in private homes and later in Durant Hall on Ellison Place. The current Reform Synagogue was opened on Kenton Road in 1985. Towards the end of the 19th century, many Jewish migrants looking for a safe place to call home moved to Britain. By 1914, the Jewish population in Britain was 250,000. More recently, large-scale immigration of Jewish people occurred in the 1930s when many of them were fleeing from Germany to escape the tyranny and atrocities perpetrated by the Nazi party. One such family was that of the acclaimed author and illustrator Judith Kerr, best known for the classic children's book The Tiger Who Came to Tea. Judith used her childhood experiences of leaving Nazi Germany and finding a new home in Britain to create When Hitler Stole Pink Rabbit in 1971. The scroll which we refer to as the Sefer Torah, Book of the Law, contains the five books of Moses, the Old Testament, handwritten on parchment in the same way for over 2,000 years by a sofa, a scribe. This Torah is one of 1,564 that survived the Holocaust in Prague. It has a provenance of Brno, Moravia, where Jews have lived since the 13th century. This one was written in about 1880. A ceremony celebrating the rededication of the synagogue's Torah scroll, following its restoration and return from London, was held at Newcastle's Reform Synagogue on the 28th of April 2019. Ten members of the community were invited to work with Sofa Mark Michaels to watch over the restoration of the final ten letters in the scroll. The scroll itself, which originally came from Pardubice in Czechoslovakia, was one of many thousands of items rescued by Prague's Jewish community in 1942 and sent to the Jewish Museum. After the Second World War, some 1,800 scrolls were transferred in the first instance to a synagogue in Prague and later, in 1964, to the synagogue in Westminster, now home of the Czech Memorial Scrolls Trust in London. Charity is an important part of the Jewish faith. This exhibition looks at some of the charitable institutions that have existed in Newcastle. One such organisation is the Newcastle Jewish Board of Guardians, first formed in 1872 as the Hebrew Friend in Need Society. It changed its name to the Newcastle Jewish Board of Guardians in 1873. The purpose of the organisation was to provide financial relief for the Jewish poor, and to grant loans to support the growth of businesses. 
The exhibition also explores the way in which Jewish people have contributed to civic life in Newcastle, including serving the country. Members of the Jewish community have played a distinguished part in the armed forces of this country, serving in both world wars. As Jewish communities in the northeast became settled and established, there was a growing need for cultural and recreational activities. This included groups like the amateur dramatic performers, the Jewish Players, formed in the 1940s. The Jewish Players reformed in 1980. Their first major performance was a pantomime called Lentil, which was performed at the Little Theatre in Gateshead. Newcastle Libraries are custodians of the C.P. Taylor Archive and we were delighted to share material from this collection for the first time. Cecil Philip Taylor was a Glasgow-born, Newcastle-based Jewish writer. He was a prolific and diverse playwright. His career spanned two decades and he worked on stage, television and radio. Members of the Jewish community have made a significant contribution to the economy and development of the North East. In Newcastle, many businesses have developed and thrived, creating jobs and opportunities for the whole community. It was felt that I went into the family business and I started learning the trade from the, the ground floor upwards, sweeping the floor, being a grease monkey, but learning how to fix cars. But we... Um, sort of changed our interest, our focus, and went into the self-drive hire business, starting with cars, uh, until we built up a fleet of about 60 vehicles of cars, vans and minibuses. Small businesses, like that of David Viner, whose family came to Newcastle in 1874 to escape persecution in Poland. His family are listed as tailors in the 1901 census. David had his own shop on Nunn Street and later Bridge Street in Newcastle. Larger operations, like that of Herbert Lobel, his family came to the North East just before the Second World War. Herbert started his working life in the family firm at Team Valley, working as an apprentice toolmaker. During the war, he worked at a munitions factory in London. In May 1951, he set up in business with Robert Joyce to form Joyce, Lobel & Co., they started at Painter's Hoff in Dean Street in Newcastle before moving to Vine Lane in November 1951 and then later to a modern factory on the Team Valley in Gateshead in 1958. Our exhibition ends with the Friday Night Table. According to Jewish tradition, God created the world in six days and on the seventh day he rested. The seventh day is Shabbat a time for rest for everyone. The Sabbath begins on the Friday evening at sunset and finishes on Saturday at nightfall when three stars appear. It is a day of prayer and family relaxation, quite different to the other six days of the week. Our Friday night table ushers in the Sabbath. The exhibition is, in its entirety is, is very interesting, very emotional. Um, because on the one hand it's history, on the other it's, it's, it's lived experience, it's what we Jews are still doing today, uh, both from the religious perspective with the uh, exhibition on focusing on the Shabbat table, which we're doing every Friday night, also um, the, the artifacts that you might call them, but they're not artifacts to us, they're, they're things that we use, the prayer shawls, the phylacteries, the Torah, we're, they're in constant daily use. And I think part of what that does is it reminds us, apart from that great continuum of history that we're part of, it also reminds us to be grateful for the opportunity we have to live and express our religion and our practice in this country as freely as we can. It's a, a great gift, it's a gift from God, it's a gift of this country, and I think it's something that every Jew that engages with their religion feels very proud of and very appreciative of.